Okay, so let's talk about the Praxis 5165 math exam. This is the certification exam that you need to pass in order to teach high school level mathematics. Now, because you're watching this video, I assume you are preparing to take this exam, and that is fantastic, as we definitely need a lot of great math teachers. And what I have for you here is a practice problem that you should be able to handle pretty easily if you are fully prepared for this Praxis exam. Let's take a look at the question. So we have three minus the square root of two M plus two, and this is equal to eight. Now we do have a multiple choice question here. Let's take a look at our answers. So A is 23 over two, B is 50, C is the square root of six, and D is null or the empty set. Now feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then of course I'm gonna walk through step-by-step step how to solve this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly tell you who I am. My name is John and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. I'm also a certified math teacher, so I totally understand what it's like to take uh, the Praxis exam. Matter of fact, I had to take the Praxis specifically the Praxis exam many years ago. So these are not easy exams. And uh, at my math academy, TC Math Academy, one of the test prep courses that we have is for this particular exam. You need to know a lot of advanced high school level mathematics. So if you wanna check out that test prep course, it's very, very comprehensive. You can find, you can find a link to it in the description of this video. But uh, let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. All right, so uh, if you answered 23 over two, well, unfortunately, that is incorrect. Now, don't feel too bad because this is something that your students are probably going to uh, make an error with. The correct answer is D, null or the empty set. So if you're not quite sure why that is, well, this is a very common uh, kind of misunderstanding that you need to emphasize to your teacher, or excuse me, to your students as a teacher. But let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. All right, so what are we dealing with? Well, we have a radical equation, and this is the type of equation that, uh, you know, you're gonna teach at the algebra one level. Of course, these um, uh, type of equations continue on in algebra two, and certainly pre-calculus. But one of the things that we need to keep in mind when you're dealing with radical equations that you could have an extraneous solution, okay? This is a small little uh, trivial detail to a lot of people, but it's actually very critical in terms of solving uh, various types of equations like radical equations. So let's go ahead and get into how to solve this and talk about extraneous solutions. Okay, so here is our equation. Now, essentially what we want to do is isolate the radical on one side and get all of our numbers on the other side, right? So in other words, we want a situation like the square root of x is equal to two. So once we have that radical isolated, all we need to do is square both sides in this particular case, and then we can have x is equal to four. But that's only one step of the process to solve a radical equation. What you need to do is check these uh, possible solutions because this may not in fact be the actual solution to the equation. This could be what we call an extraneous solution. When you square both sides of an equation, you could possibly introduce something called extraneous solution. So I keep talking about that because I'm emphasizing it because I want you to emphasize it to your students. Okay, so let's go ahead and just do the basic algebra here to isolate this radical. So uh, pretty simple stuff. We're gonna subtract three from both sides of the equation. Whoops, I went a little bit too far here. Okay, so this is what we have. We have negative, we're subtracting three from both sides of the equation. We end up with negative square root of two m plus two is equal to five. All right, no big deal there. And uh, if you want, you can square both sides of the equation at this point, or you can simply divide both sides of the radical by a negative one, right, if you prefer. Uh, to do it that way. Either way is correct algebraically. In other words, if, you're, if you don't like this negative here, you can just divide both sides of the equation by negative one. And now we have a negative five on this side. So let's go ahead and do that. So here is our equation. So we have the square root of two M plus two is equal to negative five. All right, now at this point, we have our radical, our square root isolated. So we need to get rid of that radical or square root. So we're going to square both sides. Okay, so this will allow us to get rid of this radical over here. 
And when we do that, we're going to end up with 2m plus 2 is equal to 25. Okay, so pretty basic algebra. So let's go ahead and continue on to solve for m. Now I'm going to uh, subtract 2 from both sides. I'm going to end up with 2m is equal to 23. And then here to solve for m, all I have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 2. And you're going to, you're going to get m is equal to 23 over 2. Now, a lot of you, probably most of you, I would suspect, got to this point. Because if you're preparing for the Praxis 5165, you're going to be a high school level, most likely a high school level math teacher, which means that you're going to have to teach a lot of advanced level mathematics. Okay, So as you uh, probably well know, you could be teaching calculus in high school. Okay, Certainly pre-calculus, these are not trivial courses, and you need to know a lot of mathematics. And uh, I don't know what the specific criteria is today, but typically uh, for most states, uh, at least a lot of the states that use the praxis, you uh, normally need like a degree in mathematics to teach high school level or a math education degree. Okay, so again, you're going to have to really master this stuff because you're going to be teaching fairly advanced math. But let's go ahead and continue on. So what do we have? Well, we have a possible solution here. Okay, but because we square both sides, this may be extraneous. So how do we uh, know whether, in fact, it is the correct solution or not? Well, we need to um, check this in the original equation. So we have 3 minus the square root of 2m plus 2 is equal to 8. Well, we need to put in uh, this uh, possible solution. We're going to replace it for m, and then we're going to do the math to see if the left is equal to the right. Now, there's a bit of a twist in this problem, and I'm going to get to that in just one second. But first, I hope you will consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Now, I do a ton of videos on YouTube. I've been on YouTube for many, many years. I love teaching on YouTube because I can be uh, less formal than I am, let's say, in a classroom setting. And uh, if you subscribe to my channel, I do a ton of videos that will help you out on this particular uh, Praxis exam. Okay, Just because, let's say, you may have a degree in math or math education, uh, obviously you're very strong in mathematics. You know, if you haven't been doing a lot of geometry or trigonometry, you're going to forget this stuff. So, you know, if you like my teaching style, well, then subscribe to my channel because I really do a ton of content from basic math to more advanced math, probably up to like the basic calculus level. Okay, now let's go ahead and get uh, back to this problem because there is a part of this problem that a lot of you are probably going to be a little bit confused about. Okay, Now, I would say a lot of you already understood that, yes, indeed, you're going to have to check for extraneous solutions. So let's go ahead and do this, but there's a, there's a bit of a twist here that I think some of you may be confused about. All right, so here is our possible solution. Okay, so let's just kind of go back here. We're going to replace m with 23 over 2. So let's go ahead and do the math. So we have 2 times 23 over 2. The 2s cross cancel. So I have 3 minus the square root of 23 plus 2. And now I have 3 minus the square root of 25 is equal to 8. All right, now at this point, this is where uh, things can get quite confusing for a lot of people. Okay, I can guarantee you a ton of your students are going to make this error. So here we have to take the square root of 25 because we're uh, checking the solution, right? We need to simplify this. So what is the square root of 25? Is it 5 or is it uh, the square root of 25 positive and negative 5? Okay, well, the answer is 5. Five. Okay, we're taking the principal square root of 25. Now, if you're not familiar with the principal square root, don't uh, feel bad. A lot of people uh, were, probably weren't even taught about the principal square root. So when you're taking the square root of a number, it's just the positive version. When you are taking the square root as part of, let's say, you're solving a quadratic equation, something like this, x squared is equal to 25. Here, when you're looking for a root, then x is going to be equal to positive negative 5. Okay, but if you're just simply taking the square root of a value, only use the positive version of that square root. Okay, because uh, if you use the negative version, right, th this can work out. And you're going to see here, this is not going to work out. All right, so the square root of 25 is going to be 5, not negative 5. All right, so let's go ahead and continue on. So here we have... Uh, the square root of 25 is 5, so 3 minus 5 is negative 2. Negative 2 is not equal to 8. So at this point, you might be like, well, boy, this doesn't make sense because if I take the square root 
of 25 and I call it negative 5. Well, let's go ahead and do that right now and erase this. Now let's suppose uh, you have it as negative 5. Well, then here you can make a case. Well, this is 3 minus minus 5 or 3 plus 5, which is 8. So that's why a lot of people make mistakes with extraneous solutions is because they don't they understand about extraneous solutions, but they typically uh, really have a lot of confusion when it comes to principal square roots. Okay, so hopefully this video was um, helpful to you. I can guarantee you that you will be teaching this and you will definitely need to know this for the Praxis 5165 uh, math exam. Again, check out my uh, test prep course on this. It's super, super comprehensive. It will definitely help you out. But uh, uh, with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your teaching career. Thank you for your time and have a great day.